So in the last couple of weeks, I've been testing um, a drill, the feasibility of using a drill in as a motor for some woodworking machines. If you haven't seen those videos, I'll post links below to a couple of them. Now, they've only been tests. The machines I built have just been quickly built, slapped together to test the feasibility of using a drill in that application. And today's no different. So I quickly threw together a device to test a drill in the application of a slot mortising machine or a domino style slot mortiser to make floating tenons. Okay, so the device is pretty simple. I just have a cantilevered edge sticking out here, a frame that's secured by these two braces, and then I have the drill mounted on an oversized dovetailed slide, and then again another dovetail slide that moves back and forth in here and a couple of screws to stop it in a position. This was just slapped together very quickly. There's a lot of movement which is going to affect the results. I'm, I'm sure it's going to affect the results. But today I really just want to figure out if it's even feasible to use, to cut with um, a cutter and this drill. So we're going to test that today. I've got some oak, some pine, and some poplar we're going to test it in. And then we're going to talk about a couple other features that I think would be kind of neat. Well, it definitely cut more efficiently than I thought it would. Now, it was all over the place, and a lot of that's got to, you know, got to do with the way I've got that machine built. It's just there's so much vibration and so much movement. I'm not getting a real perfect, you know, straight line across there. You can definitely tell because it's an up an up spiral bit in the direction I'm going with it. It's pulling down, it's pulling itself down. So it's going in high, and then as I'm pulling it along, it's pulling itself down. So there's some angle to the cut. But in a much better built machine, I think we get a lot, lot better results. So I did the same thing. I started over here and was pulling this direction and it, as uh, the bit grabbed to the wood it kind of pulled the bit down a little bit and that's got, a lot, that's got more to do with the machine um, and not the actual uh, cutting itself. And then when I tried to go that way you can see the bit kind of grabbed the wood and lifted up everything up to pull that way. So it's cutting the material. It's just it, the machine's too sloppy I think and I'm, I'm going to have to do something about that. So one of the things I liked about using a drill is you can put different size bits in there and use Fossner bits as well. Now I tried to make a slot mortise with a Fossner bit and it actually worked better than the, uh, the quarter inch down cut or up cut spiral bit. But with the Fossner bit we don't have that bit pulling in different directions. So this actually worked, you know, I, I, in a pinch that would be not a bad, a bad little setup I suppose. Provided that the machine, there's still some bounce in it. And that's got a lot to do with the way I built the machine. There's a lot of slop in it. So um, I'm going to throw some pine up here and give it a shot with a slot mortiser in the pine. This was oak, so it's a pretty dense material. But it worked. Um, let's, try the, let's try the pine. some of this fast cap track pad on here to kind of keep it from sliding back and forth and I think that's part of the problem there's too much that's too soft and there's some bouncing around so I'm going to take that off and try it again with that Fossner bit and see if that helps
Well, that's a better cut, but I was having a hard time holding it in one position. It wanted to slide. So that I'm probably going to have to put something on there to keep it from sliding around. But that ultimately isn't too terrible of a cut. Um, I would use that for a mortise if I had to. One thing I really like about this is um, you could use a just a regular drill bit or a Fossner bit just to drill holes in the end of it, which would come in handy if you're building rustic furniture to do like breadboards or something if you wanted some dowels in there. That's not bad. You could also put stop positions on this for a doweling jig as well. So you can make it like a, a, you know, just do three dowels or whatever. So that's an idea. Okay, so let's talk about this. You know, this drill is a lower RPM drill. I think with a higher RPM drill, maybe a little more power, and definitely a machine that is, doesn't have so much movement in it, we're going to get a lot better results. Is it worth it? I don't know. But you know what? We're going to find out. I'm going to build a tighter machine. That's something with little, very little play in it, and we'll give it a shot again. I definitely like the option of being able to put, you know, uh, drill holes in the end of stock very consistently. The idea of possibly using this as a um, doweling machine. And ultimately, what I really like about the idea or the concept that I have in this is that the drill comes out of it really easy. I mean, it's just you pull it out of the slot and you have it in your hand. And that opens it up for a whole new realm. I mean, why build a machine that can, just for a drill, when we can also add a trim router to it and cut, cut slot mortises the right way. So there you go. That had some interesting results. It was fun to test it out. And it's, I think it's worth trying to build a little bit better machine. And, you know, if I'm going to build a machine that's going to cut slot mortises with a drill or a router, I'm going to make it interchangeable so I can use both a drill and a router in the same machine. Now, obviously, there's a ton of improvements that I can make to this. And I'm going to. I'm going to see what this thing can do. So be watching for that in a future video. If you haven't already, I would like to invite you to subscribe to my channel. We do all kinds of crazy woodworking jigs, contraptions, and furniture projects. And, you know, just have fun. Thanks for watching.